What we'd like to do now is we'd like to solve this differential equation with the Dirac forcing and the step function forcing and see if we can interpret anything from that. Step functions are pretty natural to use with um, Laplace transforms. You could maybe, in this case, do a method of undetermined coefficients with it, but the presence of this Dirac function right here, I mean, it's going to demand that we use Laplace transforms. So, again, using Laplace transforms, I take the Laplace transform of the left-hand side, which is y double prime plus y. Using table entry number 2 and for this, I'm going to get... S squared times capital Y of S minus S times Y of 0 minus Y prime of 0. But we know that both of these initial conditions are 0 because the system starts off in the rest configuration. And then I add to this the Laplace transform of Y, which is just capital Y of S. So now grouping the terms on the left-hand side, we have capital Y of S times the characteristic equation S squared plus 1. Okay, I am obligated to take the Laplace transform of the right-hand side now, so I take the Laplace transform of delta of T minus pi, and I add that to the Laplace transform of the unit step of T minus 3 pi. And so now... Here, I'll quote the table entries because they're new. Table entry number 20 is used to transform the Dirac function in table entry number 19 for the step. Transforming this Dirac, I get e to the negative pi s. And then transforming this step function, I get e to the negative 3 pi s over s. So one way to think about this is that this is pure time delay in the Laplace side. And because of this s here for the second term, this is a time delayed constant. So that's how our two forces look in the Laplace side. But in terms of procedure, we're just really solving for capital Y of S. And solving for capital Y of S, I get e to the negative pi S over S squared plus 1. And then I get plus e to the negative 3 pi S times S or times 1 over S times S squared plus 1. Okay. So now, if this term, the first term is equal to capital Y1 of S, the second term here is equal to capital Y2 of S, we want to figure out what is the inverse Laplace transform of capital Y1. Well, that's the inverse Laplace transform of e to the negative pi s times 1 over s squared plus 1. And so, to understand this, what we want to do is we want to grab table entry number 5. Table entry number 5 will ask us to identify an A value. That A value is pi. And it will ask us to identify an F of S. That F of S is 1 over S squared plus 1. So if I take the inverse transform here and use 5, I get a U of T minus pi speaking to the time delay, but not f of t, but f of t minus 5. And so I have u of t minus pi. Oh, I'm sorry, not 5, but pi. And then if little f of s, or if capital F of s is equal to 1 over s squared plus 1, little f of t by transform table number 14 is equal to um, sine t. 
So, if f of t is sine t, then f of t minus pi now becomes sine of t minus pi. Okay. Not too bad. That one's not too bad. But, now that I want to take the Laplace transform of y2, I recognize that there is, or the inverse of the Laplace transform of y2, I recognize there's an e to the negative 3 pi s hanging out front. And then a 1 over s times s squared plus 1. This term right here, multiplying the exponential, that's going to be my capital F of s. And so what we need to do is ask, what is little f of t? But this doesn't look like anything that, that is easily read off the table, and that's because it's a merger of two things, and so we need to apply partial fractions. to break it down. Okay. So let's do our partial fraction work in orange over here. So I have 1 over s times s squared plus 1. That's equal to a over s plus b s plus c over s squared plus 1, which is a times s squared plus 1 plus b s squared plus c s all over s times s squared plus 1 by finding a common denominator. So now what this tells me is that um, 1 is equal to a times s squared plus 1 plus b s squared plus c s. And so if I set s equal to 0, then I will find out that 1 is equal to a. Now, there aren't other s values that I could use that would make this super obvious, and so um, now what I'll do is I'll compare the quadratic terms. On the left-hand side, I have no s squareds. On the right-hand side, I have an a plus b, so that tells me that b is equal to negative a, which is equal to negative 1 then. And then I'll compare the s terms. There's zero s terms on the left and c s terms on the right, so that means that c is equal to zero.